Hello, all you hardcores. You know who this is now. We've done 3,000 videos nearly. How are you doing, Julian? I'm all right, mate. I've had a good day, good week, family week, trained every day, but this uh, this Connor Ben thing's giving me a hernia, mate. It's only a bit of boxing. I shouldn't I shouldn't take it too seriously, but I'm, it's just becoming borderline irritating now, isn't it? It's uh, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Really, it's, it's embarrassing, mate, isn't it? It's awful. So you and I were just chatting, weren't we, like half an hour ago? And it, you know, you said you'd fancy the Zoom jewels, and it were me tonight, wasn't it? I just says, Russell, I've just seen this uh, Boxing King Media interview, and by the way, it's because it's the only one I've seen with Eddie. So I'm not I'm not digging out Boxing King Media because he's probably done one with all his buddies and IFL and everybody else. I'm just I'm tired of the lies. It's like they're so smug about it, and they're they're also turning in. They're getting that victim mentality, aren't they? Eddie's now getting this. There's an agenda. There's an agenda against the man in the profile picture. Is there an agenda against Matchroom? There's an agenda against Conor Ben. Um, and why are the border control treating Conor Ben differently to other fighters who I'm not going to mention? Well, well, we can step through this as much as you want, but IFL, Boxing King Media, all of those um, YouTube or those social media boxing outlets out there, yeah, none of them are asking questions that they should be asking and they've never been asking those questions and I'm I'm frustrated as to why because all right if one person starts asking questions too hard they're not going to get access but why don't they all just say look this is for the good of boxing this is for the good of sport let's be consistent with the questions that we're going to be asking Eddie Hearn and Frank Smith and anybody involved in this Conor Ben circle, and let's ask them the right questions. And I think we all know what those right questions are. And what's that? Well, right. the, the, the first control? question, the first question is really, really simple, right? And if anybody's got a link to something where Eddie has been asked this question since the second line of defence since a 270 page document etc etc send us a link put the link in the comments and they'll say oh well we've missed it we've missed it so the question is right it's was con eddie eddie was clomiphene in conor ben's system that that's the question isn't it yeah and then what you do then is you have a talking business processes, you have a set of decision boxes, you have a flow chart. Right, was Conor Ben, was Clomiphene in Conor Ben's system? Answer, there's only two answers to that, isn't there? Mm. Yes yeah. or oh. no. Yes or no. So was Clomiphene in Conor Ben's system? So that's not being asked outright of Eddie Earn, has it? No, nobody dare ask it. Yeah, not, not that uh, Parsons is not going to ask it. Uh, that Policeman, uh, serving policeman, Gully's not going to ask it because he's already treading on eggshells. No, Coogan's no. not going to ask it because he's been hanging out the back of Eddie for 13 years. None of them are going to ask it. Boxing News will ask it, but they don't get as much access. Boxing Social, there's that Parsons now, so they've been softened up. Whereas when Rob Tebbett were there, it would have been asked, wouldn't it? Rob Tebbett's yeah. not there now, so we've got Parsons who's probably, what is he, what is he, 19 year old or something? He, he's basically starstruck, isn't he? He's starstruck. He's going to build a probably an impressive journalistic career based on a friendship with the, one of the biggest promoters in, in boxing. Mm. But it doesn't make you a good journalist, Parsons, I'm afraid, mate. You know what so, I mean? All the... Um, all the great journalists and the great writers and like people who investigated like political scandals, um, they all had one thing, Parsons. I'm not singling out a 19 year old kid, by the way. I'll I'll address this to every single 
um, so box, so-called boxing journalists, right? All of the great journalists that un uncovered stories about Nixon and scandals and all of these things all had one thing that none of you have got, a pair of balls, a pair of balls, because these people who, if you look through history, you look at some of the biggest scandals that broke, there were generally, there were small newsroom articles and there were people who wouldn't let it go. People who said, no, this is wrong and I'm not going to be silenced. And these guys are just not asking the right question. I mean, it's the simplest thing in the world, right? Was chlorophene, Eddie, in Conor Ben's system? Was it found in his system? And as I've just said, there's only two answers, yes or no. And then if you go to yes, okay, so yes, chlorophene was in Conor Ben's system, then there are then two questions again. Yeah, there is, was it planted? Because if you're saying, I haven't, I haven't, knowing they've taken any chlorophene. Was it planted? Yep. Or was it taken intentionally? And if it were planted, if someone's planted chlorophene in Conor Ben's system, it's really simple. The burden of proving that is on you. You have to prove it was planted unknowingly or it got into your system unknowingly. You have to prove that beyond any reasonable doubt. Otherwise, if it is in your system and you can't prove how it got there, there's a really simple thing called strict liability. Strict liability has been a policy that effectively has been in place for all athletes, different disciplines who have all tested positive unless they can prove unequivocally it was planted, but it was really inadvertently taken it was a freak thing. Unless you can prove that, strict back liability applies and you get a ban. And it's no more complicated than that. But it all links back, Russell, doesn't it? It all links back to that one single question. Was chlorophene in Conor Ben's system? Yes or no? Well, it was, wasn't it? Because he failed two tests. Well, it was in his system. So I'm going to go down this chain with you. So you're Conor Ben, Russell. Yeah. We found chlorophyll in two of your test results, the A and the B sample, uh, showing. So with four samples that show that chlorophyll is in your system. So, so Connor, how did it get there? I don't know. I don't know. I think somebody stitched me up, or I don't know. I don't know how it's done. It. It's uh, it's contamination. Yeah. So, well, first so, of all, we'll... yeah, or, or it could be too many eggs are bad. Or there's some skullduggery at work. We've heard it all, haven't we, for 16 months? We've heard it all. And do you know what? This is the this is the stamping of the feet by the Essex boys, by the the rich, the privileged, stamping their feet. They're continually not getting their own way. Now, another thing I want to address, what Boxing King Media has just asked Eddie, and when Eddie made this statement, wasn't challenged on it at all, so shame on you for doing a really bad job. And again, I'm not targeting Boxing King Media, you just happen to be the one interview that I've seen. But what you've asked, the questions you've asked and the questions you've avoided are consistent with all the other boxing so-called journalists. So I'm using you as a, as a target because, like I say, you're consistent in your questioning. So the second thing was what Eddie Hearn said in that interview I've just seen, which where I said, Russell, well, let's cover this tonight. The, he said, the border control have said we have not gone down the route, you know, the process that we should have gone down. We've not, we've not sat in front of the border control. And then Eddie Hearn starts going down the path and he says, we've done what we've been asked to do and we were cleared by the WBC. So I've got a question for you, Russell, and I'm just doing it just to help the kind of the flow of this conversation, right? So do the WBC issue licenses? No. No. They're just a, a world governing body who issue rankings for licensed boxers. You pay them money. So why do you go to the WBC? Why were the, they the first people to see this 270-page document, and they might be the only people right now, we don't know who else has seen this. So 
why do you go to a world governing body when this is a licensing issue? That's another question. Why, why, why is no one asking Eddie Earn this question? And then the next question is, okay, you did go to the WBC. This is why you and I need to sit in front of them and ask these questions. You went to the WBC, okay, and now you're saying the WBC cleared, cleared Conor Ben. Did the WBC clear Conor Ben based on the argument that you put forward? The argument you put forward was there was contamination at the laboratories. What, what did the WBC respond to with that? They said there was no contamination, didn't they? Yeah. So there's no contamination. So the WBC didn't clear you of what you actually were using as a defence. The WBC became a witness for the defence, which has never happened before, when they said, actually, let's, let's have a look at some of the things that you've eaten. Show us a, a list of your diets. Quite a few eggs on there. Do you know what? In some cases, we've found that clomiphene can be used um, as a fertility drug on farms, on, on battery farms. And we found this sometimes happens and you've had quite a lot of eggs. So I think there's a reasonable chance that you've ingested clomiphene inadvertently by a consumption of an excessive amount of eggs. I mean, the WBC being a witness to the defense, this has never been done before. This is just, you fail a drugs test. It's not down to the world governing body, is it? It's down to the anti-doping body and the licensing commission. Those are the two people you sit down with. So we're being lied to. And they've got the platform, they've got the media in the pocket, and they really have. And they're just lying to us because no one's asking the right questions. Shame on everybody else for not asking the right questions. And when Eddie Hearn said the WBC had cleared us, that's when Boxing King Media should have really challenged him on that point. And said, well, technically they didn't clear you of um, what you were saying. It wasn't in your system. So if the WBC, who are now Eddie Hearn is clinging on to like the shining beacon of our defence, the WBC, the world governing body, the great governing body, the historical governing body, the green belt, the WBC are basically saying, we think there's a reason this has happened. If, you know, if the WBC is saying that, why, why are you sh shining a light on them? Why are you clinging on to something that you're saying, actually, no, it's not in our system because that's been the argument all along and that goes back. I know it's confusing what I'm saying by I'm going on different threads, but the genesis of this is that one question, isn't it? It's the genesis of this is the one question, was clomiphene in your system? And what did the WBC say when they read that 270 page document in terms of contamination at the laboratories? Did the WBC say clomiphene was in his system? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they yeah. Did, yeah. 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 They said clomiphene's in your system. How did it get there? You probably ate too many eggs. Yeah, weren't they saying he had like 35 eggs a day or something? You have to I don't know what they said, but I mean... 30 odd eggs or something a day. The, the amount, I guess, is... You have that in drink. Is it possible to have that in shakes? Because uh, every no, time no. I have a shake, uh, I don't always put an egg in it, but Odd day, I'll put an egg in it, but is it possible to have thirty raw eggs? Can I don't know if he said thirty a week or thirty a day. I don't, I don't know what he said, but ultimately, no one would consume that much because you know the real, the, the rule of thumb is you need about 0. 0.6 grams um, per pound of body weight, and that that's a five six grams of protein in an egg. That that's a lot of eggs, but also. There are other things in eggs that are not great for you. So for various reasons, you can't eat too many animal products in one day consistently. So what the WBC is saying ultimately is goes right back to it. Was clomiphene in your system, Eddie? Was it in his system? If Eddie Earn says no, then you turn around and say, well, actually, the WBC said it was, and this is how it got there. So the WBC then didn't clear you because you're saying it wasn't in his system. But nobody has asked the question, was it in his system? I keep repeating myself, and I've been repeating this point for so long now. It's like, how many videos have we done on this? Yes. It was in his system. No one's saying it wasn't in his system. So unless you can prove you were spiked, unequivocally you were spiked, even if you had too many eggs, 
you didn't check where those eggs came from. Simple as that. Strict liability applies, two-year ban. It's just, that is it. And the irony of all this, Russell, is down to the fact that the thing that is popped for is a known masking agent. I know we know Gabriel Montoya covered this in great detail, did a really good job in two or three videos explaining what clomiphene is. It's a masking agent. Isn't it funny how that the thing is popped for is actually a cover for much bigger things? It's in his system. If you can't explain how it got there, you get a ban, mate. It's as, it's as simple as that. And that's the reason nobody's asking that very, very first question. Eddie, was clomiphene in Connor's system? Just asking the, just asking the one. There's I had Talksport asked him that. There's not even 10 questions to ask, is there? There's one question to ask because then when, the, because I'll tell you why they haven't asked him, Russell. Well, maybe they prepared really badly. Maybe um, Simon John really let us down by not asking that one simple question. Because ultimately, that's the that's the point that the border control are going to look at this matter. Obviously, jurisdiction and all that. It's all smoke screens. The jurisdiction argument is all smoke screens. The British border control have effectively said, clomiphene was in your system. You have to explain to us how it's got there. If you can't explain to us, you will get a ban. There's an automatic two-year ban in terms of the UK UCAD rules. There's an automatic two-year ban. You have to explain how it got there. Well, he was out at ring 18 months before he fought in Florida. Right, so he could technically say he's done an 18-month ban, couldn't he? They won't say that, will he? Because by saying he's done a ban, he's admission of guilt. And he's not going to admit guilt, is he? Come this far now, aren't they? And shot the mouths off that much, aren't they? And this is the problem, Russell. And that's why I was when we were chatting offline earlier, and I was really frustrated. It's because it's the what's happened now, and and I know Eddie sometimes tunes into your videos. You know that because he responds sometimes to your emails. Okay, we know that people watch your watch Porky's Corner, and that's not blowing smoke up your ass. You know that we, you hear back certain things. I hear back certain things. I'm still, I still talk to people. Remind me, I've got something on the gab that you might like. I don't know if I told you this or not. Um, mm -hmm. I'll we'll do that one a little bit later. You, you, you'll like this one. Um, but we both know people in boxing, and even though I'm no longer an actively licensed professional coach, I still have contacts in boxing, and I still now and again chat to people, and you get to hear certain things in boxing. And the general feeling is that they've handled this really, really badly, but there's no doubt about what Matt Troom are doing and what Eddie Earn is doing. Is he's trying to bully the British Boxing Board of Control into submission. And what that goes down to, what that comes down to is having a real privileged life and you get what you want. And when you don't get what you want, you just have what's called pester power. You just pester, pester, pester. And what's happened now is they become embarrassing. Frank Smith and Eddie Hearn are become embarrassing because the amount of U-turns that they're doing is untrue. It was only a few days ago Frank Smith was saying, you said it, it's on. It's on. Done. Shut up about it. It's on. Now, the interview I've just seen with Eddie Hearn is, he says, as it stands right now, the fight isn't on. And this has become embarrassing. This has just become now for a long time, hasn't it? Was it July 2022 when we, we the first yeah. failed drugs test? And we're actually closing out 2023 now, aren't we? And they're embarrassing. They keep That's announcing... Oh, aren't we? 2024. And they keep... Yep, 18 months, whatever. They keep announcing dates, don't they, for this Ben and Eubank fight. They keep We've been announcing... Saying it all, aren't we? It's a bit like the Tyson Fury Usyk thing, isn't it? Just everything just keeps getting. We're always on that up, chasing the carrot. We all of this, every one of them. So the contradiction. There's so many contradictions. So one of the biggest contradiction was this again was Eddie Earn trying to bully. So a few days ago, maybe a week, week and a half ago, I saw something. I pick up the odd thing, and I saw Eddie Earn talking about the fight, basically saying it's done. Okay. And he was asked a question, he was pointedly asked a question. 
if you don't get licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control, what will you do? And he effectively said he would look for another route, didn't he? He said, we hope that the Board of Control will clear Connor. We expect them to clear him. And this is in bullying, by the way, because Robert Smith's tone yesterday was completely different, wasn't it? There was no expectation of him being cleared from Robert Smith until, unless the evidence points to that. And this is Eddie bullying him. So weeks ago, it was like, the fight's done. We expect the board. Well, what if what if the board don't license you? And Eddie basically says, the fight's going to happen in the UK, no matter what. No matter what. That's what Eddie said. The fight's going to happen in the UK, no matter what. And I've just watched him on Boxing King Media, and he said, as it stands now, the fight is not on. Those were your words, Eddie. I don't forget words. Those were your words. The fight is not on. You're embarrassing yourself. You're just embarrassing yourself with this. It's cringe. It's cringe. We're on on Monday. It was it was on on Monday, and now he's saying, as it stands, it's not. So you're really expecting the the public, the 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 ticket buying public, to have a leap of faith here, aren't you? If you're well, going to the last time they fought, everybody lost the money, didn't they? And their hotels and they don't care because the reason they don't care is because the only people who really care about losing money is Matchroom, who lost by the sounds of it seven figures on this fight, and he's going to make sure he gets that money back, Eddie, isn't he? Mm. He's going to do whatever he can to get that money back. He doesn't care about anybody else on the undercard, the fans, the travelling people. Because you so what you get refunded your ticket. You know as well as I do, your ticket is only half of the cost when you go to a big fight. Yeah. Everything else, it's all the collateral and everything else that comes with it. Your ticket's only half of the cost. But they don't care. But they do care about their own money. And this is why is effectively bullying the board of control who you know don't have a great deal of time for but he's trying to bully the board of control continually with his words and with his language and by continually pumping on social media it's on it's done it's over the line it's happening this is the date we're looking at that's the date we're looking at we hope the boxing board of controller gives a license but if not it's still happening in the uk it's still happening and you just bullying and using pester power to get your own way and you you said in this interview again you were saying you know we, you've done what's been asked of you to do frank smith has said this uh several times we've we've done we've done everything we've been asked to do Connor ben has done everything we've been asked to do you've done everything you've been asked to do apart from the one thing you need to do sit in front of the border control and you can with your evidence answer and explain how clomiphene got in your system. And if you can't do that, you get a ban. Why is that so fucking hard to understand, Russell? Oh. Christ. Why are the people around it, the media? People still, do you know something? I did something the other night. It might have been last night, the night before. I think it was because you'd sent me a couple of things about this and I thought I have an Instagram Instagram account I don't follow anybody I, I'm going to delete it at some point and I kept it because I used to go on Instagram and do a few lives and chat to boxers and stuff um, and I thought I'm going to jump on Connor Ben's account and if I offend anybody who's Connor Ben fan on Porky's Corner then I'm not right bothered if I'm being completely honest and what I did is I, I wondered how people can be so thick and still be a fan of this man, this two-time drug cheat. I was like, how are people so thick and so brainwashed? And surely most people are just not buying this whatsoever. So I jumped on Connor Ben's Instagram account and I clicked on a couple of his images and I started reading some of the comments. And you're the champ, you'll get your belts back. I'm going, belts? Okay. Uh Hoping one day you'll find... What about five people said, hoping one day you'll come and fight in America? And I'm thinking, he's just boxed there. And you're the champ. You'll knock anybody out inside three. And there's a lot of love for Conor Ben. And I just realised there's a lot of either brainwashed, superficial... I haven't got a belt, has he? 
He's got nothing brainwashed, superficial, stupid people, or people who really are just Instagram queens and they don't really even follow boxing. But there was like, they must cleanse the comments or something. But there was there was no logic in those comments, and you only have to jump on, you know, you jump on Porky's Corner and you and you you read the comments on on Connor Ben, and generally the pretty spot on, aren't they? The people who watch this channel. They're not buying this shit, are they? They don't buy this crap. But if you go on well, some of the... they're not them, buying it, why do I Why do I get uh, abuse every day? So, you know, it's like a cult, all them that leave comments and you don't understand boxing, and so you can't win. No, you can't. Uh, you, you, you can't educate wood, my dad used to say. Um, I've heard that. That's an old saying. <laughs> you can't, you can't educate wood, and if you argue with a fool, it makes two fools, and all, all that kind of stuff. And that's not me being pompous or arrogant. I'm just talking about this like most people who have got any kind of common sense are talking about it. You've had opportunities to prove your innocence, Eddie, and everybody else. And we've sat down, we've done this, we've done that. You've done nothing. And if you, and I, you know me, and I'm pretty neutral or pretty frank when it comes to Robert Smith and the Board of Control. I've had my own issues with Robert Smith and the Board of Control. So I wouldn't defend Robert Smith unless I really thought it was right, would I? No. no. Whilst the Board have made mistakes along the way, even with this, it's like what Eddie doesn't realise because he's such a pampered little just spoiled brat when he's saying things like, why is, is there an agenda? Why are you treating us differently? You know why we're treating you differently, Eddie? Because you're behaving differently. Because you're not following the process. And you're trying to bully the board of control. And you're trying to bully Robert Smith into submission. So Robert Smith, because he's getting stick that now from talk sport for, for keeping quiet about this, he's like, well, I can't win if I keep quiet. I can't win if I speak. He can't win, can he? Either way. So, Robert Smith, I thought, spoke, bite my fist, Robert Smith spoke very well. I absolutely applaud his stance. I don't applaud everything he's done. I don't think he's got this right all along the process. But fundamentally, his stance is you have to answer to UCAD. We'll go with UCAD's recommendation, but you have to answer to UCAD. And if... Eddie Hearn and everybody else involved keep saying, we've done everything we've been asked to do. Why is Robert Smith saying, you've not done what we've asked you to do and you've taken a hell of a long time doing it? There's a massive disconnect, isn't there? So yeah. who's who's telling the truth? Robert Smith or Eddie Hearn, Frank Smith, Matt Troom, Sims, those guys and Team Ben. And I have to be honest, I've had issues with Robert Smith I have to be honest, but Robert Smith is, I believe him, I believe his version of events. And I don't believe that Ben, right at the beginning of this process, has done the right thing. And we need answers now. What we don't need is the announcement of a fight without licensed boxers. And I think they're a shameful bunch. I genuinely think they're a shameful bunch. They've got no decency amongst them they've got no integrity any of them amongst them and i think they're a disgrace well when i realized that i think it were all going a bit pear-shaped with him when he went on Piers morgan because i thought that were very brave for them to do but they thought it's nigel ben's mate Piers morgan they were at the ben mcclellan fight and They've done bits of this with peers and bits of that of here, bits of TV work and media work and blah de blah. But when Piers Morgan, uh, Piers Morgan just did his job, didn't he? And he asked Conor Ben, well, what about this 270 page dossier? Why can't you just show that? And when he said, well, I don't have to, well, once that was said, I thought, yeah. well, they're guilty. And then Anthony Fowler came out and he just. Brilliant. He, he more or less nailed. What did Anthony Fowler say? He nailed it, didn't he? He just talked logically like you do with me sometimes, didn't he? Yeah, Anthony Fowler basically just said, you can be a nice lad. I know him. He's done some promotional work for CBD oil for me. He's a nice lad. But that doesn't mean he hasn't cheated. And Anthony Fowler used the word cheat, didn't he? 
He didn't yeah. say anything about this can get in your system. He's, uh, I feel for him, you know, he's in a tough place. He said, you cheated. Just own it that you've cheated. And this is the thing. And I deplore drugs to cheats in sport, certainly in contact sports. But I have said before to you, they, they sent that. And I, Connor Ben, yeah, whether I like him or not, is irrelevant, right? Connor Ben's a young man who's turned professional under a massive shadow. Yeah, he's got huge footsteps to fill. Now, when you look at the first two to two and a half years of Connor Ben's career, it became really obvious that it wasn't going to be his dad, didn't it? You could just see he didn't have the explosive power. He just didn't have what Nigel had. He didn't have the electricity. Now, he also didn't have the physicality. You could see that. He just physically didn't look that strong when he turned over at light well to it. He was quite scrawny, had a pencil neck. Now, if you're Conor Ben and then you, you're getting the big billings on Sky and you, you're in a life and death with a painard who's not really a puncher, a bit of a journeyman in truth, and you just come out of that fight, all he must hear, to be fair, is like Campbell Hatton. At that point, before we move on to the second half of his career, all Conor Ben must hear is, not like your dad, not like your dad, not like your dad. Oh, he's not his father, is he? Now, that must be quite hard, actually, because deep, deep down, he knows he's had a very privileged upbringing, doesn't he? He hasn't had the hungry path and the hungry you know, road that Nigel Ben had. And let's be honest, he hasn't really had the love of the British public that his dad had at that point. Now, the temptation, especially when people say everybody's on it, everybody's on it, the temptation to go down that route of taking enhanced supplements must be quite high. That must be a high, high temptation. Now, I think a lot of clean athletes or a lot of good people don't do it. But what what I heard at that point is the Bens weren't filthy rich at that point, were they? No. Oh. They love money. They weren't filthy rich, no matter what, what we're led to believe in Australia. They really weren't. Now, all I'm saying is I'm just trying to give a, a reason. I'm not going to say a justification, a reason. The temptation to be your dad, the temptation to be this fearsome fighter, and the temptation of millions in a dirty sport where it's widely acknowledged, do you know what? Everybody's doing it. Everybody's on it. Most of the elite guys are on it. That temptation must be quite strong. And you have to ask yourself along the way, what was the turning point from that 10 stone, scrawny, not very physical fighter who wasn't even turning his shots over to just become this really powerful 10 and a half stone fighter who wasn't icing everybody, as we've said before, but he was knocking out some guys who had quite good reputations. And two and two in this case looks like it means it adds four. And going back to the 270 page document and everything else, they really could have proved this, you know, they really could have proved how this got in his system. If they're saying it's eggs, you've heard me go down this route before about a chain of custody and a serial number and a vendor code. Really easy to do. Where did you buy my eggs from? I got them from there, there and there. Where do you get your, where you supplied from your, your eggs from? From there, chain of custody, back to that farm, buy some eggs, do some tests with clomiphene. They're illegally farming their hens. It's easy. He hasn't done it. Instead, it, look, there's so many smoking guns and we cover this, but why Russell? Why, why, why go down the route of due restriction? Which And here's my favourite subject this, which takes me back to what I said earlier about people not asking the one question that matters, but even the other questions that the Boxing King medias and the IFLs and everybody else are not asking. They're just not asking the right questions. There's only one to ask. There's only one to ask. What's plomophene in your system? They're not they're not asking the one question that matters. And they're, they're just masking over everything. And it's just becoming it's become 
embarrassing, hasn't it? And as I said previously, we did a video last week and I said, boxing's kind of moving on now. We're looking at these, the Wilders fighting, Joshua's fighting, Fury and Usyk are fighting. Whether you think they will or not, we've got all these big, big things happening in Saudi right now. And becoming a little bit irrelevant. Don't get me wrong. They'll sell tickets. I'm not stupid. They will sell tickets. As I said about Connor Ben's Instagram feed, there's a lot of stupid people out there who genuinely believe is, you know, the next kind of like Thomas Ernst and he'll do this and he'll do that and he's an amazing young person. There's a lot of people believe this. That's that's fine. But they don't know much about boxing or life, I would argue. But he's really not this superstar what people think he is. Um and it's just boring now. It's embarrassing. And I don't know if they've dug the hole so deep that they just have to just live in it. I don't I don't know, mate. But shame on the media. I know that's obviously what we wanted to talk about tonight, but shame on the media for not asking those questions because you really haven't got any balls. None of you have got any any balls. But more importantly, as I said earlier, more importantly, you haven't got integrity because this is a very, very dangerous sport where people, even when we have clean athletes involved, people lose their lives in boxing. And it's a really dangerous sport. And by not having asking the right questions, and not, not asking the right questions, but demanding the answers to the important questions, because ultimately, that's what these guys should be doing. You should be demanding answers to the important questions. And they're not. So uh, the spineless and the lack integrity and the man in the mirror moment. Yeah. It's hard work for Coogan in this because obviously he lives in the same village as them, doesn't he? Right. And he's like mates with him. And so it's going to be hard for him to ask Coogan. Coogan it's going to be hard for Coogan to ask Connor Ben and Eddie these questions that we'd like to ask. So when that gully from Boxing King King Media gets the opportunity to ask the questions. It tickles the arsehole. No, I think I, I think they should all ask the questions. I think Coogan should ask the questions. And never mind, is your mate? This is this is sport. This is a boxing. This is a sport we should all protect. I don't care if your mates or not. Sometimes with your mates, and I've been there. I've been there with staff. I've been there with friends. I've been there with family. Sometimes you have to have very difficult conversations with people. Very difficult conversations with people. Most of the times they're not public, but sometimes the outcome of those conversations do become public. It's your job. You're a journalist. You, you should act as a journalist. You know, any any profession such as that, you have to be objective, you have to be neutral, and you have to do the job as a journalist. So I don't think it's awkward at all. I think it's called being real. And if you're not man enough to ask the right questions, then you're in the wrong job. It's what about all thing. these print media guys, Jeff Powell? Steve Bunt's Colin Hart. They're not asking even, Col even Colin Hart's become a massive disappointment, isn't hasn't he? You know, compared to that opinionated guy I was when he was a Sun newspaper writer all those years ago. I don't know who he writes for now. He might even write for that that rag. I don't know. But they're just they're not asking the what well, clomiphene in his system, Eddie. Yes or no? No, it's a close question. It's a close question. Was clomiphene in his system? Well, yeah, but you see, what happens is this: we think no, no. Close question, yes or no? What's clomiphene in your system? Ask that one question, and then depending okay. on the answer, like I just said, right at the outset of the video, then go down that path. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. And you get to a a consequence. You get to a result, don't you? No one's asking it, buddy. I saw a guy uh, on YouTube. With less than a minute, Russell. By the way, no, no, yeah. I, saw, I saw a guy. I saw a guy on YouTube ask a question. And he was going down that path, and uh, Eddie took him down a different path for about eight minutes with an answer, and it got away from the journalist because Eddie and Eddie's quite slick, isn't he? <laughs> he wouldn't do that with me. He wouldn't do that with me because I've had to, I've had to do various investigations, various tough conversations before, as I've said to you, and you make it clear at the beginning: this is a close question. There's a yes or no answer. I'm not interested in the in the fluff. Yes or no? Was clomiphene in his system? Nobody's asked that question in 16 months. Pathetic. You're all pathetic. A lot of you, you. You're an embarrassment to your profession. A lot of you. And I mean that. Yeah. Should we go Back to, to Russell. No problem.